Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back with some more Marduk, and last time we made it through Lake Quir, took down the Lake Hag, and unfortunately we're not able to unfreeze or uncrystallize those people over by the lake. However, we are now into Canonia, which is Emla's hometown, and let's explore a bit here. And here we find what might be my favorite song in this entire game. Hello! What? Well, I said, hello! How's things? You don't talk much, do you? No. Well, who are you? A mercenary. A mercenary? Does that mean you're hired to kill people for a living? Basically. If we were to offer you money, would you fight with us? 1,000 generic gold coins. I'll sell for that. No less. Well, here you go! Then my sword is yours to command. Well, since we're friends now, can you tell us a bit about yourself? No, and we're not friends. Let's go. Well, okay. Isn't it so ironic that we just hired a cold-blooded killer to fight with us, despite all the talk of how killing is wrong that we were doing earlier? So yes, we did in fact just hire Zack here, work alongside us, and he truly is now a party member. Yes, he did truly cost a thousand coins, which if we had been a little more aggressive spending coins in shops earlier, then that would have been a pretty sizable fee. Fortunately, we had a fair bit stockpiled, so it wasn't too bad at this stage, but yes, quite literally, a new party member, and uh, one of my favorite ones at that. So. Happy to have him along for the ride, and uh, we'll see what this is all about. Also, I have neglected a little bit to use the chat function, where you can speak to any member of the party whenever you'd like, and oftentimes they will make a comment about the location where you currently are, or just give a general outlook as to what's going on in the story. Rohoth? I have been watching your progress recently, Marduk. Since you joined the guard, I must say, I'm impressed. You've come a long way from the innocent, clueless young lad I bonded with all those years ago. It is looking very likely that my plan will be a success after all, despite the setback. Yes, a lone hero is more than a match for a whole faceless army in this universe. Well, what are you talking about? Hmm? Oh, never mind. I'm just thinking about it. You best get back to your own business, Marduk. So yeah, in that case, a little bit more of a, a general outlook on the current state of things. Not so much a reflection of where we currently are. Hey, Marduk, we're still alive. <laughs> Isn't that great? Well, uh, yes, I suppose. I know it's a weird thing to say, but it's true. And it's sort of odd that it's true. I mean, I shouldn't doubt our abilities or anything, but if you think about it, we're doing what would kill so many ordinary chaps. Yet, we're still alive. It is very promising. Maybe we are cut out to be heroes after all. The guard training really paid off. Now let's aspire to be knights, eh, old friend? Together, we can do it. We've come this far. And our other cl cliches to that effect. That's Dugan. We could theoretically check back in with some of these people, because I think in both those circumstances, they were updates, again, just sort of generally and not so much specific to our current location. And so I think if we talk to them again, there's a non-zero chance that they might say something else. Like, here you go. This place has such a different feel to God's Norm. It seems like it's sunset or something, even though it's not. Everything's just a little darker, sleepier, quieter. Even than God's Norm? I think I'd rather like it. Try right, Rohoff again. A sleepy town like this is an easy target for the merciless forces of darkness. Okay. Thanks, Captain Positivity. As for Emla, um, hello, Marduk. Nice, um, weather we're having? Or, uh, is there something you want? Well, I was just wondering how you were doing. Me? Oh, um, I'm fine. No problems here, sir. 
Actually, I'm rather enjoying traveling with you guys. I'm, uh, not exactly used to being with you guys, apparently. And I sort of had it in my head that they were all sorts of, like, steely. But, um, you're not. You're nice. Hooray for you. So, um, let's go some more. Yes, let's keep being nice, too. And we can try, see if Emla has anything to say about being in her hometown. Um, we really can't go and see my friends or family or anything. Please, um, just accept that. I, um, don't want to dig up old memories. You understand, right? Well, I suppose. Good. Now, um, we have a mission to do. Come on. All right, Emla. Whatever you say. As for Zack, see if he has anything to say. Won't you talk to me? No. Oh. And there you have it. <laughs> Look, we actually cannot interact with that bookcase, believe it or not. <laughs> it's a bloke! See that guy at the bar? That's Zack, a mercenary. Yeah, <laughs> we spoke to Zack already. I've heard that he'd slit your throat and pay you a copper. I'm pretty sure you have to pay the copper, and then he tax people. Pretty sure that's how that works. See that guy at the bar? That's Zack, a mercenary. I've heard that he'd kill his own best friend for the right price. If he had any friends, that is. Okay. See that guy at the bar? That's Zack, a mercenary. I've heard that he'd slit his mama's throat for a gold piece. See that guy at the bar? That's Zack, a mercenary. I've heard that he'd slit his own throat for half a copper. See that guy at the bar? That's Zack, a mercenary. I've heard he sits on toads and plays with the coppers. I have no idea who that man at the bar is, but I bet he's a clown. <laughs> or maybe, maybe a pirate. Or a robot. Yeah, so it sounds like we just hired a, a real high-class gentleman to tag alongside us. Have you ever heard of the elemental crystals, Lado Laddie Ladder Boy? I bet you haven't. The water one's supposedly hidden around here, but nobody knows where. I checked in my bed and my bookshelf and under my table and didn't find it at all. It's really well hidden a mystery. I'm an adventurer and I'm a woman. That does not make me an object. I'm not wearing a chainmail bikini. We women can do everything you men can. We can climb mountains and get diseases. We can slay monsters and sleep on rocks. We sweat and die. And we shouldn't have to wear skirts. Stop looking at my chest. All right, tongue in cheek, yes. I heard Social Fox was dead. That's unfortunate. I wanted to make sweet, passionate love to him one day. But I suppose there's always... Oh, what? All right, lady. No. Too far, too far. Brother Beardbert. Where are my brothers? They said to meet me at the Mushrooms for a good old chat about women and how we consider them to be objects, but they're not here, and I can't be arsed to look for them. Oh well, there's my day gone down the pond hole. Well, there's that other guy over there who looks just like you and is also looking for his brothers. That guy's probably an imposter. That's not a very nice thing to do, impostering. I hope he regrets it on his deathbed. Where are my brothers? They said to meet me at the Mushrooms for a good old-fashioned swearing competition. But they're not here, and I don't know where they are at all, and I can't see them anywhere, and I'm too scared and lazy to look for them. Maybe we can help? Eh? What? No! No, you can't! Stop meddling! I don't know you! Go away! Yes, yeah, so in case it wasn't clear from the many other people that we've spoken to, you know, don't take what they're saying too seriously. It's all pretty tongue-in-cheek. I sure do hope this town doesn't get overrun by zombies this week. That would be unexpected. Definitely don't read into what they're saying. Ah, and I think I see a familiar face here. Wifetta. <laughs> I did not remember that her name was Wifetta. Also <laughs> clever. Every house in this village is exactly the same inside. Really rather irksome because there's only one bed in each house. There's four of us now. So we have to take turns sleeping in the bed while the rest sleep on the floor. It is unfortunate. <laughs> and Husbert. 
No less. We heard from Elwyn again, the correct pronunciation, not entirely sure, about what happened to her parents. Came running to the door, crying in a terrible state. All we could do is take her in as our own, and look after her as best we can, as if she were our own. You mentioned you too, you soldiers. Marduk, is it? I thank you for what you did for her. Even if you didn't bring back her parents, you did all you could, and that's very noble of you. The world would be a, a better place if it had more nice, kind people, such as yourselves. Thank you. Gloria? Um, are you the people who helped Ellie after her, um, after what happened? Thank you so much, people. Um, you're good people, and, um, I'm so glad Ellie is safe. Okay, Gloria. Mardek! You came! I'm so happy to see you! Hey, well, uh, how are you feeling? Um, I'm better now. Gloria and her parents are so nice, and they let me come and live with them. So, at least I'm not alone anymore. I still miss my parents, but I'll be okay. I feel much, much better now that you're here now, though, Mardek. Um, here, Mardek. I want you to have this. You were so kind to me, and killed the lake hags, so nobody else would ever lose people like... like I did. So, I think you deserve this. I hope you think of me when you wear it. Well, thank you a lot. I hope you can visit often, Marduk. I'd really like that if you did. Well, I'll stay in touch. Hey, you better get back to your soldiering now, though, soldier man. Go on and make more people happy. Thanks, Elliot. Sirens. Concerning sirens. Sirens are a variety of monster that lure sailors to their deaths by tempting them with their beautiful siren song and their deceptive appearance. Out of a beautiful, naked, young woman. Definitely not related at all to the people we are speaking to here. I've heard... <laughs> I've heard that they are very attractive. I wish I could see one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think you get the point. I think you get the point. Also included on the following pages are sketches of sirens. I'm sure that will get this book published. Mardek, no! <laughs> Emma is not pleased. Understandably so, I suppose. Have we checked this room yet? Oh, also, before I forget, let's take a quick look at the item that we got from Elwian, because it is actually incredibly good. It gives one magic defense. It is a delicate brooch made of a lapis lazuli and silver, fashioned in the shape of a water lily. It was given to Mardek by Elwian to show her gratitude. It gives Mardek the M Shield ability, the new active skill that we have yet to learn, so we'll definitely want to put that on, in addition to giving the passive ability to have plus 10% MP. Not bad there either. And it gives the one magic defense, like we were saying, 50% water resistance, which is pretty awesome. 50% resistance to silence and 50% resistance to curse, which are both status effects. We haven't seen much of them yet, but... Between all those various things, not bad at all. So we definitely want to put that on Mardek because he's the one that gets that magic shield ability. Everyone could get the plus 10% MP, which wouldn't be a bad idea. But Mardek gets the most use out of it, at least until he can master that skill. And we could theoretically put the, the fire pendant back on someone now that we are no longer, say, going underwater and expecting to run into many fish and the likes. I forget who we had it on. I think someone was partway through using it. I think it was Dugan. Although apparently he never got attacked when he was wearing it, so he has not mastered it at all. So, maybe we actually put it on Emila. Reason for that being, Emila is water elemental and does naturally have a little bit of water resistance, so it somewhat counters the, the negative side effect of the 50% vulnerable to water. And we'll see how quickly we can level up those skills. It's the type of thing where if you can get that defensive reaction mastered, the sooner the better. Because that way, you know, you don't have the, the downside of that uh, water vulnerability. We do also have a few shops. This one being mostly just potions. Phoenix Downs are quite good, however, they are very expensive as well, and we've picked up a fair amount of them. 
those being the items that allow you to resurrect your friends if they fall down in battle. Why is there an old man running this shop? That's stupid. It's not very nice. Here we see the next weapons and armor shop, and we have some weapons that we have not yet seen, including ones that have new offensive reactions. This would be from Mardek here, one-handed sword. Barrier Break is a two-handed sword, or iron freight plate, I should say, is a two-handed sword, so it would be something for Dugan, and it does have a new Barrier Break ability, in addition to just generally having more damage. And I don't think we've seen the Breastplate yet, which is just a slightly better version of a Copper Breastplate. It has one more defense, but it also has the Damage Soak 20 defensive reaction, which is not bad. Unfortunately, can't quite afford it at the moment. However, that is something to keep our eye on. And we did pick up Zack. I, I suppose I forgot to hover over him a little bit here. But he uses a double sword, which is a really cool weapon that we'll be able to check out soon. It is a double-bladed sword from Lands of Far, Shashik. He has the Berserk ability. Has... Oh, hold on. We're technically hovering over Dugan there. The Berserk ability... Plus 20% damage, offensive reaction, and soul strike. And he has his own hide armor, which also has 20% damage reduction and 20 damage soak, so some pretty strong defensive reactions there, along with three defense. And it is technically light armor, which does mean that even Emla could use it. So once Zack has mastered these defensive reactions, then that might be worth throwing on Emla to give her some access to some abilities that would otherwise be difficult to pick up because she cannot wield, cannot use the medium armors such as the chainmail or the breastplate. So we won't, excuse me, I would like to leave this establishment, thank you. We won't purchase any of that stuff yet, but it'll be on our radar. And we'll continue to explore a little bit around Canonia. I live alone and am so lonely. I'm sorry. Defining deities, your yeah, lords. Yalors, the Omni Dragon, is a draconic deity widely worshipped throughout Belfan. The worship of Yalort is called Yalortism, and followers of Yalortism are called Yalortians. Yalortism is the most popular of religions in the world because of the widely held belief that Yalort was the creator of Belfan and many of the stars. It is believed that the elemental crystals were given the newly crafted world, were given to the newly crafted world by Yalort directly, bestowing the world with the gift of life. Yalort's name should always be fully capitalized. It's blasphemy to disobey this rule. Words derived from his name, however, like Yalortian or Yalortism, do not follow this rule, and it is taboo to capitalize them, as that would be suggesting that a Yalortian deserves as much respect as Yalort. Yalort himself is generally depicted as a large dragon with vast, dark, feathered wings, textured like the cosmos, emerald green fur all over, black stripes, and piercing red eyes, with which he sees all. We've heard about him. There's a little more context. There are a lot of people in here. This wall is my friend. Okay. So I had fish for a food some time ago. I miss it now. Okay. They all look the same. And like the same food, probably, but you never can tell with this sort of thing. Okay. Also odd. I'm sleeping! You sure about that? I suppose there's a chance of sleepwalking. Darn that shaman! This commotion in the village is all that shaman's fault. Now all hell is breaking loose. I just don't know what to do anymore. I think I might just end it all. No, it's okay, man. You don't need to. Life is fun. Party with me. You don't look like you're happy, though. Do you like biscuits? I like biscuits. How about lobster? I don't even know what one of those is. I'm sorry? What's that? You want to read my bookshelf? Is that some kind of creepy pickup line? You. As for you. Or you. These pots remind me of women. I like women. They can be used for... Okay. <laughs> There's one woman in this house. <laughs> Again, don't take it too seriously. Uh, I'd like to speak to you, though. Not Biscuit Man. Stop moving! I'm a woman! 
Actually, your name says girl. I suppose maybe it's a rectangle square type thing. Things were different in the past, weren't they? They were better, wouldn't you say? I miss the past. I mean, that's an awfully broad question. Where are my brothers? They said to meet me at the mushrooms. A good old-fashioned game of let's take off our clothes and run around scaring children. They're not here, and I'm glad, because that idea sounds stupid and illegal. Kids, don't try that at home. It is stupid and it is illegal. As for this random cave, with this thing in it, we sure are lucky to have this zombie-proof cave. I bet it'd be really useful if ever the town were attacked by zombies, which would be a rather unexpected thing to happen, really. Here. Take a quick look around here at what is in this cave, because... Holy water. Ten of it, no less. Holy water blessed by Yellort, used to cure curses and with zombification. Being blessed by Yellort as it is, it burns the mouth of pretty much anyone when they drink it. Firm skin, even if you rub it on, too. So pick that up. And then we will head into, I believe, the only room, only building remaining that we have not yet explored. That being Barracks, which is, technically speaking, where we're supposed to go. Which is over here. Ah, fellow soldiers. Good to see you, fellow soldiers. Captain probably would like to see you too, so go right in. Thank you. Hello, guard captain. You're soldiers, right? From Gosnor, I assume. Were you sent by Jackie Boy to help with the monsters and things? Well, that's right. Jolly good. Right, I suppose I should fill you in then. The monsters seem to be coming from the woods to the south of the village. Normally there'd be monsters in there, just like in any woodland. There's only recently that they've been acting up like they are. It's odd. I'd assume this is due to the disappearance of the shaman. The monsters started going wild when the shaman just went missing one day. Nobody knows why or where the shaman went. So your main mission is to find the shaman. If the shaman returns, then surely the monsters' odd rage will subside, and we can be back at peace once more. So that's all you have to do. Go into the woods, Shaman's missing, yes, but it's unlikely that they left the woods, and even if they did, it'd be a good idea to check the woods anyway, just to be on the safe side. So go on now and do that. Best of luck to you, soldiers. Go into the woods. Long story short. And that we shall. So if we head back out of town, we will find that we can go south into the Canonia Woods. However, actually, hold on. I do remember that last time we were talking about trying to test this out. Oh, that was quick. And so we have Zack now. We click on Zack, we can take a closer look. He is very quick with 18 agility, and that is partially why he is going first here. He does also have the Ring of Agility equipped and a Ring of Strength equipped. We didn't put that there, he started with them. And he does have fairly high strength, low spirit, and middle-ish of the road vitality, maybe a slightly on the low side. And his techniques include Berserk, where he enters a Berserker range, doubling strength, but becoming impossible to control. But you know what? Let's give it a shot. Berserk, he goes. And we do, of course, have Emla using her new Stone Plosion ability, which is almost master at this stage. Well, we'll get there. A little over 50. 50% of the way there. Dugan has now mastered all those abilities, so we'll just use normal attack here. Not quite enough to take this guy out. As for Marduk, he does now have the Magic Shield ability. He gives the target the Magical Shield status, which reduces magical damage by half. So we saw one of the Chrysophages in the Gem Mines using an ability somewhat like this. Unfortunately, Marduk can only target one ally with it, so let's say, you know, sword on Zack, for example. Zack gets a shield there, and with Zack's Berserk ability, when it's his turn, we have no control. 
he just uses an attack against whoever he wants to use attack against. We can do the reactions, but there is no planning involved. He is, however, stronger when he does that. So, the other thing I wanted to check was if we try to go down here without the Aqualung ability active that we had earlier, you can jump in the lake from here, but are you ready? Sure. You're not ready at all, you liar. You can't breathe underwater like that. All right, if you say so, game. And so into the Canonia Woods we go. And tell you what, I think this is probably a good place for us to wrap up here because I think that there's going to be lots of new things for us to explore in here. This will be one of the largest areas we've been in yet, quite possibly the largest. So we'll get the chance to explore it further and see 